Okay, so welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to the teaching Q&A session. And I have a great list of questions here. So I'm just gonna start at the first question and head on down. I'm gonna probably do some screen sharing on my computer if any of the questions need to be um, directed to a particular page or to a particular resource. I'll go ahead and take you there. And um, I will just start answering questions and um, we'll see how it goes. All right, so the first question is, what is my teaching style? So um, I talk about in my e-class, I talk about the difference between demonstration style and um, hands-on learning. And of course, most people prefer hands-on learning. So I think if you can find a way to teach in a hands-on way where people are actually doing, then I think that works out very well. But what you really have to do is figure out who you're teaching to and what it is that they need. Because for instance, if you're teaching a class for, um, let's say, you know, uh, teenagers, and they're gonna be doing a really fun class where they're learning how to make bath salts and lip balm and maybe melt and pour soap. And the focus of the class, you kind of have to ask yourself, what's the goal and the focus of the class? And in that case, the goal would probably be to have fun, maybe to learn something, to develop some new skills. But the focus with younger people is usually on fun. So if that's your focus, I would say you really want to get as hands-on as possible because um, people enjoy doing, especially as part of an activity. So I would go with hands-on. So in my classes, if it was a product that lent itself well to hands-on, let's say for instance, bath salts or salt or sugar scrubs or making tub teas, herbal, herbal tea bags, those types of things, those were always hands-on. And I would set up a little demo area and I would do a little demo first and then I would show them you know, I would either pass around the materials or have them on a table and they would come up. So there's always a little bit of demo incorporated into my teaching style, but then if we can do it, we go for hands-on. Now, if you're talking about a product that's more involved, something like cold process soap making, that becomes a little trickier. And um, the reason, of course, is because you're dealing with lye right? You're dealing with a harmful substance that you have to worry about uh, people burning their skin. Um, and you're dealing with heat in some cases uh, where you're heating the oils. You're dealing with stick blenders where people are putting um, a, a high-speed blender into a caustic mixture of raw soap that if they lift it up and turn it at the right angle, it could spray all over the place. So with cold process soap making specifically, I always preferred a demo style class and um, the thing is the majority of the people who are coming to the Nova studio were really doing it because they wanted to learn how to make soap to sell it um, or at the very least they wanted to um, give it away but they really their goal I think their focus was learning to make soap and so that they could make it at home. So in that case, I felt like it was a better, more controlled way of teaching for people to actually learn the skills necessary to do it on their own at home safely. And that style of teaching cold process soap making and hot process soap making was always quite successful for us. Now, we did have people, of course, say, well, I only learn well if I'm actually doing, but in some cases, I, I know that people may, that may be true for some people, but in, in some cases you can imagine, let's say you're teaching somebody how to make a cake and um, you know, they have to do everything from crack the eggs to weigh out the milk to you know, turn on the oven and, and make sure everything's done perfectly. The idea that, that if you just put them in there and they're doing it, they may not be paying attention to certain parts of the process as they're doing it because they're so involved in doing it. So with cold process soap making, it is pretty involved. So I felt like um, by giving people handouts where they had all the instructions and they could follow along, 
step by step, then they see each part of the process done. They're able to ask questions and interrupt throughout, and then they see the final product. Um, so with cold process, I always did it that way, uh, partly also because of the logistics of having, it's like if you did a cake making class and you had every single person actually making their own cake, that would be a, that would be a very difficult class logistically to do. So I always preferred the hands-on. We did have a few, I'm sorry, I always preferred the demo, but we did have a few what we called hands-on soap making labs where people would come in, we would have them work in groups of two, um, and they would decide together what batch to make. But for those classes, we had a teacher and we had at least two or three TAs. So if we had two or three TAs, that's four people supervising, and we would have no more than eight students. So we would always have one person able to watch each pair uh, who were making the soap and that I felt was really important because again you're dealing with a caustic substance uh, another thing people do who are teaching cold process soap making to groups is that they do parts of the process ahead of time like they'll mix the lye and the water and they'll have it all pre-measured out and they'll hand that to each of the the groups um, that are doing it so even in that scenario, you don't have someone doing it from start to finish, uh, but it is a much safer way to do it, and that's the way that we always preferred it. So, um, all right, so go ahead and type into the chat window if I've answered that question thoroughly uh, before I move on to the next one. Um, and for a, a product like lotions or um, anything, again, anything you're making in batches, I prefer to do it demo in, in a lotion class specifically and lotions and creams. I would make the entire batch together and I would um, uh, portion it out on a scale into, uh, I believe it was a four ounce container for a lotion or a two ounce container for a cream. So we would pour it into a disposable cup on the scale and we would weigh it and I would know exactly how much weight I was looking for in each cup. And then we would hand it to people who had already chosen their scents and their colors that they were gonna mix in to customize that lotion or cream. So that was a way for it to be, I still would call that uh, more demonstration style than hands-on, but what I used to say in my description was this class is demonstration style with hands-on elements and that's what I meant by that so the lotion and cream they had a little disposable stick and they had their drops and I went over what they were going to do when they got their cup ahead of time so that when they got their cup they were ready to mix it um, but uh, for that type of class it again was more about people learning and understanding the process all the way through from start to finish so that they could go home and make it by themselves on their own. And um, if you wanted to do a class that was 100% hands-on where people weren't sitting there watching anybody do a long process of anything, what I would suggest you use are bases, pre-made bases, lotions or creams that are already made by a company who sells it. and um, and that way you also have all the preservative in there and you have everything all, um, you know, um, you have a, a stable product that you're adding, you're having the students add small amounts of color and scent to, and then they're packaging it in their bottle and they're labeling it. So that's another fun element that you can include is people can design their own labels and fix their own labels and um, and sometimes you can have them also design the bags that they take the whole thing home in you know they can really um, have fun doing the packaging of it so you would buy those uh, if it was a lotion you would buy it in like gallon a one gallon container with a big pump and then you would just have people come up and fill up a container mix the container and then pour it into their finished bottle or sometimes you could just have them create it right in the finished bottle if it is a lotion um, as opposed to a cream might go right into a jar 
So um, I hope that answers that question there. Um, go ahead and type into the chat field if you want any more clarification on any of that.